What's up, everyone? My name is Bok Choi, coming down from downtown Las Vegas at Casa de Rancho. This is Ran and Rance, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Polly Shore. Yeah! Wow! What are you thinking about that, sweet baby James? Huh? You guys feeling it? This is your guy's second episode. Wow. All right, all right, all right. We got that, we got that. Okay, 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 we got that, we got that. Don't, you're gonna, you might faint, you might fucking pass out, relax. All right, guys. For all you people out there in America that are inadequate, all you people out there that feel maybe you're, you're stuffed down, you got no what? You got no what, Bok Choy? You got no love. You got no love, what do you have here? We have love here. Sand and, and, and uh, Vietnamese. Yeah, All right, cut the music, cut the music. <laughs> What's up, you guys? What's up? Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. People all over the world, thank you for being here. This is Polly Shore. I'm the host. This is my uh, video podcast. It's called Random Rants. This is when I, uh, I pretty much just take a subject, what's on my mind, just go with it. And, and now I have a group to support me to see where the fuck these things go. Uh, 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 James, tell people where they can find this beautiful podcast if they're just tuning in and they want to tell friends about it. Well, you can find this beautiful podcast on YouTube, Spotify. Do it a little bit more ghetto. YouTube. You can find this shit on YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, motherfucker. There you go. All right. All right. There you go. You can find it all these places. This is our actually second episode of my new Vegas crew. Thank you guys so much for, for, for... For not quitting, I could have easily gotten a text message. Hey, I'm fucking out. You're fucking crazy. So, are you guys sure you still want to still start with the girls? Are you sure you still want to be part of this or what? Absolutely. It's a pleasure working with you, and I can't wait for to we'll see what the future holds. Cool. Awesome, Talitha. Yeah, I agree. Every week is a new adventure with you, Polly. Wow, that sounded like a, almost like a weird uh, dating thing or something. Like every <laughs> week is a new adventure. No, but for real, you saw the comments. Did your family see it? I know you went to, out to Arizona this weekend. Your mom see it? Any of your friends see it? Did you watch the comments? Did you? Huh? Yeah. Um, I'm my, talking to the... Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, my mom did see it, but sadly, I don't think she knows who you are, Polly. Well, that's okay. She's older, though, so, you know. That's okay. Not everyone knows me, but, you know, maybe from this podcast, since the beautiful, his beautiful daughter's on it, she'll start to what? She'll start to watch She'll it. She'll start probably. to watch it and check yeah. it out. All right, but you're in. You're still in after a week. Yeah, we're you're still good? going you're strong. Good? Thank you, guys. Well, Polly, you know, I'm glad to be here. I don't want to be nowhere else. You the wind beneath my wings, Polly. I love to be the big to your Rob, the Robin to your Howard Stern. Cool, I'm cool. Here for you. And and Mike. Yeah, uh, I'm ready to. Uh, so this is second week. So sec- yeah, this is second. You read the comments. Yeah, I read the comments. Uh, good and bad as well. I agree. Um, I feel like they're ready to uh, give us a chance, and mm-hmm. I'm ready to party. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, guys. And I have to also tell you guys, not only are you guys excited about being part of this particular podcast and show, I'm also excited to have you guys, you know, as well. And that's why I was thinking, you know, we're all kind of new friends, and since I live alone and I'm pretty much by myself, I was thinking maybe after we record today's podcast, you guys can hang out with me because I don't really have anyone in my life. I'm kind of actually by myself like this because I just uh, <clears throat> I just recently moved out of here from Los Angeles and you know, I'm alone. I'm not married. I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. I'm in this, this house all by myself. So I figured why just fake it as people and friends on the podcast? Why not afterwards I'm pretty much asking you guys out on a date. So when the show is over today, can you guys maybe hang out with me and we can go swim and go on the trampoline, Talitha? Um, I actually have plans after this. Um, I'm going to a, another pool party. Sorry, Polly. Kira? I would love to, but I have plans with this guy I started talking to. We're going to the obstacle course at Lake Las Vegas. James? 
Paulie, I'll be busy doing black people shit. I'm sorry. Fucking bok choy, you're my last hope. Please don't don't abandon me. Don't leave me. Then my whole life people have left me. Please, bok choy, you're the last of the Mohicans. Can you please stay with me and not leave me? Sorry, Polly, I got plans to make this shit with my family. I have an idea. What? I'm gonna make it my mission to find you a wife no, to have no. some crusty we'll kids. Shut the music. I don't care about this shit anymore. I'll just I'll figure this shit out. Anyways, it's not about me. But thank you guys for being honest. I'll, I'll be alone. Polly Shore stands alone. We're good. We're good. And on that note, let's bring up our guest. I'm very excited about this gentleman. Bok Choi, can you please tell the people who this person is? Well, we have a very special guest tonight. He, before he was a UFC fighter, he actually was a substitute teacher and a program volunteer for the Clark County District for seven years. He's a big fan of Rico's Nachos with a melted cheese of sauce. Yes, and yeah. on that note, let's bring it up for Big Roy Countryman Nelson. Holy shit. Holy fuck. He's gonna hurt me. God damn it. He's gonna fucking hurt me. Don't hurt me. You're too fast. <laughs> Dance, Roy. I know he's out of your comfort zone. Just a little bit, yeah. Big country, man. I can't move too much. I might get winded. <laughs> Kira, do you have any country music for big country? Play some country music. Fuck, she didn't prepare it. All right. Okay. All right, cut the music, cut the music. Anyways, give it up for big country here. So that's kind of like your hook name, like Big Country. That's like me, the Wheeze. So do people yell at you Roy or do they yell at you Big Country? No, nobody even knows my first name. It's always Big Country. Really? Yeah. And then what, do you, what, if, what if you, you know, what do you do about that? Uh, I correct them. Yeah. Because uh, I'm your biggest fan. I'm your biggest fan. You know yeah. how it is. Yeah, let me see your ear. What the fuck, dude? You could, Bok Choy, do we have some ointment and shit for this thing? It's a little thrashed. Yeah, we have some ointment. Uh, maybe Neosporin. Yeah. All that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, okay, we're going to put some. <laughs> That's an open one. <laughs> we got some. So, dude, because you're <laughs> retiring, Sue, and you're stuck with this. Can you, like, sue Dana White and say I need a new earlobe or some shit? No, actually. Here, show them how gnarly it is, bro. Like, right here, right here. Yeah, right there. It's fucking gnarly, It's just dude. hard. It's hard, right? Yeah, but yeah. that's what plastic surgery's for. Are you gonna do? <laughs> Are you gonna fuck with it after? No, no. Okay. It's because I went to a doctor. That's how I got there. He fucked it, right? He's one that he screwed fucked it. it up. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I met this gentleman uh, on a plane, right? Can you tell us about how I met you? It was about four or five years ago, or it was a lot longer than that. Really? Okay. It was like seven. Shit, seven. Okay, so tell us how we met at the airport, right? Is we were in Burbank Airport. Mm -hmm. I was. Um, Doing some, you know, because we're always in the entertainment industry. and Yeah, we're in the entertainment industry. Sorry for saying that. <laughs> if you didn't yeah. know, that's what we're doing. Okay, go on. Uh, and uh, we, were, uh, we were in the Burbank Airport, and I saw you walking um, back and forth. And, then I'm like, and I, I said, big country. And then you went up to me, and you're like, big country? And I was like, but Polly! I, yeah. And, and then, and then that's our friendship started and right there. It all started like that. And then you started in about my father and Las Vegas. Tell us about that. And the more you speak on this, the better. People don't want to hear me speak anymore. Go. No, the, um, actually, I knew Polly's uh, dad from working out at Gold's Gym. And he was a guy that just worked out every, every time I was there, he was there. Mm. So, and I would, that was more inspiration for me because he, he was an older man. Yeah. And he was there 80 plus years old, still, you know, yeah, cranking grinding. away, yeah, grinding. grinding, grinding. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, so I noticed the last fight you fought a Russian dude and it was, uh, it was like a tie. And then they went with the Russian dude because I think Vladimir Putin actually put in that vote for Donald Trump because it's, you know, it's, it's, it was fake. Cause you really won. Right. Can you tell us about the, fight? I wish it was like that, but no, I just, he, he, he just, he controlled the fight, and it just was one yeah. of those things, you know? Yeah. I, I had to train during COVID. You know, it's hard to yeah. train with a mask on. Yeah, that's true. And it's interesting, because I don't know about you people, but when I watch UFC fighters, and they're on top of each other, except for him, because I got to be honest, like, your body's pretty fucking gnarly, dude. I mean, you got a belly and shit. You know, it's not like glistening. You know what I mean? Unless you're like, oil. No, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you look at this guy, you're like, what the fuck is this trucker doing in the fucking ring, dude? They look like he just came from a Waffle House or some shit. Unless oh, you look at the legs. Shit. I know, I know. I, trust me, I don't want to get my shit beat out of me. But you don't look like a fucking normal UFC fighter. So my question to you is, 
when people at home watch UFC fighters and they're on top of each other and they're like, you know, like in this kind of position in their heat, do you think, does it arouse people or no? Uh, it depends. I mean, it really all depends. I mean, for me, I ha when I was in the UFC, I actually had the largest female base. Okay. Which is, well, you'd think is a little bit crazy because, but the reason why is because I was like the gay best friend. Right. Like, hey, what's yeah. up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was safe because, yeah. I, you know, I'm married, and, but it's just where the other guy, if you're chiseled and the whole nine yards, the girls, like, it's mm -hmm. either put up or shut up. Mm -hmm. Like, like are we going to, you know, do it or what? Mm -hmm. and so I, I, I have the long-term version of, you know, with the female fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, then, right. And then what about, um, you always notice um, in a lot of sports, a lot of people come out of the closet. You ever notice that? You know, like the football, there's a guy that comes out of the closet. There's uh, what other sports do people come out of the closet? Give it, yeah. Soccer. Soccer? The ball's getting tossed around. Yeah. <laughs> Some people come out of the closet, Bok Choi? Uh, yeah, they uh, come out later on after when, usually when they're about to be retired. Yeah. Yeah. But is there any is there any homosexuals that are within the UFC that are fighters? Do you think now? I'm I'm, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> no, but for real, because it's a big deal. No, it's a big deal for fighters or for for uh, sports people to come out of the closet. Depends on how, how, if you. So is but do you know any gay cage fighters or? Uh, do I know any gay cage? Uh, there, there's a couple that I you know I think are suspect. Yeah. But, you know, but you know, yeah. I really don't care. Because I was thinking, and I don't know if you guys think this too, it's like if I was, if I was going to come out of the closet, I would probably do it in the middle of a fight as I'm getting beat. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Like if you're like, here, let's get in, a, like, here, get on the floor for a second. Here, you know what, Bok Choi, get on the floor because I know you really won't do it. Here, hold this. Get on the floor. Here, so let's get in a 69 position. Get on the floor, all the way. Get on your back. North, south, north, yeah, south. Yeah, like this, okay. North, so, south. Right, like this. A lot of this is like, Right? You know what I mean? I don't so, know what move that is, but, but I mean, I know, I know what that this, move is, but, it, this, this, but this, it's not an MMA this, move. <laughs> but I'm saying like, like, like bok choy, pretend you're gay and, and you want to you wanna, you wanna, uh, win, but you're stuck because you're not going to win. What would you do? You would tickle my taint. Do it. No, because you can't. Oh, oh, oh. See, but that's yeah. illegal. You can't put your fingers in orifices. <laughs> Oh, thank so, you. Give so, it up for Buck Choi. So they so they already stopped the so they already stopped the illegal moves. I don't know. I just figured. I mean, if you licked them, different story. Right, right, right. If you licked your taint. But because if I was if I was gonna come out of the closet, I'd probably do it in the middle of a fight as the guy's balls are right in my face. I'd be like, dick, 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 dick. you know what I mean? And then he's like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like an ultimate gay cage fighter. Because there's women fighters. There's, you know. Well, like one of my friends, uh, Heath Herring, way back in the early, I want to say like 2000, there was a Japanese guy in Pride, went up and kissed him right before the match. Oh, that's went, hilarious. And then he knocked him out. Oh, wow. Before the match even started. Yeah. So it all, I, I guess it all depends on where you come out. I bet after people see this podcast, they're going to probably say, oh, I know blah, blah, blah is actually gay. Because I think that would be cool to have like a UFC fighter come out of the closet and say they're gay and how you, th you think heterosexual fighters would fight sure. this guy. <laughs> so you're definitely not the, you're def when I first saw you fight, I was like, this guy, can I use the word hillbilly? I mean, I'm saying this shit sure. away from you. But I mean, you look kind of fucking like a gnarly hillbilly. Like you go to Kid Rock concerts and shit. Let me see you go, whoa, motherfuckers. Woo! And I take your hat off and be like, yeah! Be like a hillbilly, dude. You look like a full on hillbilly. We're going back, boy. I know. Because <laughs> if you're going to start getting into movies, which we'll talk about later, I think you could play a fucking badass, like fucking Southern Hillbilly motherfucker, one of those type of guys. I think it would be sick. Right? Uh -huh. Anyway, so what was it look, what's it like being, looking like this, looking exactly the opposite of these other, other fighters? Girls, I mean, you've seen them fight, right? Yeah. Yes? I mean, what was your thought? You're like, oh my God, right? How sexy. How sexy, okay. Bok Choi? Yeah, um, I like how you get aggressive and you take your time to uh, aim at Not sexy? Moment. Not sexy. Oh, very masculine, yes. 
Anyways. <laughs> so we're going to go into, it's time. We're going to go into rant. We're going to go. I want to end this in a funny thing. We got to do something funny because this is not ending funny. Guys, you got to do something for me. Help me out here. Nothing? Rim shot? Give me a rim shot or something. All right, anyways. <laughs> fuck. Huh. And on that note, it's time for what? Man number one, one two. Two. That was a tough monologue. <laughs> it was tough, right? Bok choy! <laughs> Bok choy, dance with him. All right, cut the music, cut the music. All right, here we go. So, you have one more fight planned. Tell us about that. Yeah, no, I, for me, I have, you know, one fight planned for, uh, you know, to call it a day, and it's, uh, I got Matt Mitrione. That's the- Who is it, Matt Mitrione? That, that's the only guy I actually want to beat up, so let's, uh, like, it doesn't have to actually be in the cage. It could be on the street, like, for, but Matt, Matt's the only guy I actually really just dislike. Yeah, but he's only he's the only one that I literally pay somebody to fight him. So what makes you want to not like this guy? Because that's I, interesting. You know what? I've, I've known him. him. I've known him for shoot, twelve plus years, wow. and he's just a turd. He's a turd. I mean, I, 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 have, I have more names, but you know, but you we don't, say. we don't, we don't know. Uh, He'll be watching this. Well, I don't, I don't care if he's watching. I just don't want, you know, like some of the fans be offended by some of the things. I don't want to be cut out because, I mean, what I said earlier got cut out. Yeah. We... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't... <laughs> so, so tell us, is it Matt Matrioni? Uh, you know what? We just call him Matt. Matt. Meathead. Meathead. So where is he from and what are you going to do to him and when's this fight? Uh, I don't know when it's fighting because uh, I haven't seen him on the street yet. So, but I really don't care. Right now, we're, we're here to have fun. We're getting ready to watch your movie coming up September fourth. Yeah. Yes, we have a movie, and coming. that's all I care about. That is, I'm all about. Is a, I'm all about promoting that. So speaking about speaking about movies, because I know we were talking by the pool. I don't know. It was a. It was a. Uh, yeah, it was a. I don't know. It was a couple months ago, and you you were saying like, yo, uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this this fighting thing up. You know what I mean? And you're gonna go into the next part of your life. Mm -hmm. So tell us what the next part of your life is because you're 44 years old. That's fucking old, dude, to be a fucking UFC fighter still. No, I, for... Uh, is it for, or not? Are you the oldest UFC fighter? No. No. Like, for... To be competitive, like, for us uh, old guys, like, for the heavyweight division, we are, we are blessed because if we can knock you out and nobody wants to, you know, get punched by us. Uh, little guys, a little bit different. I think usually it's about 37, 38. So the but, bigger guys are older. Bigger guys just hit harder, so yeah. we, we, we keep our power throughout you know life. Mike Tyson is fighting. Mike Tyson is supposed to be fighting he's in, in November. Fifties. Look straight into the camera. They want to see you. Don't look over at this idiot. Straight away. Well, then you need to stand no, right no, here. No, no, we're talking. No, I'm looking at that fucked up ear over here. Actually, that ear's not so fucked up. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, uh, uh, so look into the future. Talk about where your head's at. You wake up every day. You just told us that your last fight is with Maxim. What's his name? Maximini. Mm -hmm. Meathead. Meathead. So no, that, my, so all of a sudden that yeah, that's finished. Now that's what? finished. Like right now, my my direction is still to entertain the fans. I mean, that's my number one goal. I mean, I have fun entertaining fans by just laughing, just putting on a good you know good show. Depending on whatever it is, it could be podcast, could be whatever movies like. Uh, the one thing that actually got me into fighting was actually my uh, was I wanted to be a B movie star, and mm. that was like. Well, then my... you're in the right place because I'm a C movie star. <laughs> so the... <laughs> see, we got that. Oh shit! Car crash! Car crash! <laughs> oh, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's before the car crash. I'm trying to say it in Vietnamese. Hard. Hard. That's it? Just one fucking thing? I thought you were going to babble a whole bunch of shit. It's rants. Okay, that's good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Sounds like fucking mush. Listen, so 
B-movie star, like Claude Jean, Claude Van Damme. Tell us, because there's an agent. There's a lot of people that follow me. Yeah, you know, no, people the, are following me. People are going, fuck, right now. They're saying, Roy, Roy Johnson Jr., big Roy country ass. He's going to be perfect. Tell us. They're watching. Yeah, no. The, uh, what I, I, I got into movies uh, from watching, you know, Karate Kid, American Ninja. And the only way that I knew to how to get paid to do martial arts was to be in movies and being like a stunt guy. Mm. And then lucky for me, like, I would say five years ago, six years ago, I, was, um, I got my very first movie. And it was uh, Scorpion King 4, so I was like, oh. Wait, I'm... wait, 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 not so fast. Scorpion King 4? Scorpion King 4, so I was like, what I'm going to do The Rock. Th- one, two, and three. Oh, that was uh, Randy Couture, Kimbo Slice, and then like the very first one was... Uh-huh. Uh... Go on. Uh, you keep it up. Uh-huh. I might have to come out on you. <laughs> <laughs> come on, let's get in the position, get in the position. Let me tickle your tank. So go on, so Scorpion 4, what did you do in Scorpion 4? Because uh, I know so, people are Googling that shit right now. Yeah, no, no, like... Uh, Girls, lean into it. Ask them about Scorpion 4. So I, I, I did Scorpion... I, like, I was blessed to be able to do Scorpion King 4. Um, and then we, we, we went all the way to Romania to film it. Oh, wow. And then I kind of learned more about the movie industry, about um, basically, like, they've filmed, like, Wild Wild West over in Romania, where I'm like, wouldn't it be easier to just go to Montana? And they're like, no, 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 it's about SAG and the agents and unions and getting paid cheaper over uh-huh. here you know so i was like i thought it was very interesting but it was like a full circle because i got to do scorpion kick four and then they were like um we got a stunt double for you to do stunts and i'm like no no i want to do my own stunts because yeah, yeah. it was like because this is like one of those dreams where you're like this is what it got me into fighting yeah was actually to be a martial artist you know and get paid for it, and I fell into fighting, and then it's kind of was like a full circle. Wow. So when you, you're at home, you, you told me off camera that you love The Rock. Mm-hmm. Like, as far as what he's done. Yeah, no, his he, career. He, he's one of those guys so that, like, us, yeah. like, The Rock is one of those guys that just pyramided and, like, you know, did what he was supposed to do, and then just escalated and moved it over here and moved it over here and moved it over here and just kept on pyramiding and adding, you know, to the base uh-huh. and just getting bigger and bigger. Like... How everybody complained when he did Disney movies, uh-huh. you know, remember when he did like the Tooth Fairy and like, yeah. Uh, but so that great, was the, that was great, the, that was a, was a great, great move, mo- great movie for him because one of my favorites, Tooth Fairies. Girls, did you see the Tooth Fairy? What I haven't. You, yeah, just say you did. Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. What was it about? Uh, the Rock is the Tooth Fairy. And that's it. I can't really remember much about it. I yeah. saw it years ago. She was ago. on medication. She gets hit, she gets no, hit she in the head too. That takes a lot of pills <laughs> at night. Sometimes, right? Vicodins and stuff. You see. No? Oh, we don't talk about that, Polly. Okay. She's wild, this one. <laughs> Anyways, so, okay. So, <laughs> oh my God. Here, stand over here. You got to stop looking at me. Stand right in the middle and look straight at the C300 camera. I, I, oh, hey, ben, I don't know how how what you're doing look? behind me. That's the only reason. Ben, how does this look? Good. It looks good. Okay, so, again, look into the future. Tell me, tell us your hopes and your dreams. I know you're talking about real estate. Like, wh- where are you going to go? Because... You said it's a wrap in the next fight. Like other fighters are gonna be looking at this that they're in their forties. They don't know what to fucking do. So be inspirational to these guys. What no, do you think? the I, the thing about fighting is do, you always find a passion that you love. Like I I would fight for free because it's just what I, I I if I could do it every day I would do it. I mean I train every day, but at the at the end of the day you can only do so much. Mm. So, but like for me, I'm always entertaining. I've always, that's why I remember way back in the day we were talking about comedy, just mm-hmm. like movies and just any type of entertainment, entertainment. that's with, uh, you know, entertaining fans. Cause so you, 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 be you in- have that fan base yeah. and it's like, and as, as the person that, you know, the fans are, are, are fans of, mm-hmm. the, it, everybody else does the better for on the promotion side so, and they make money off you. So it's like learning how to, by the time you're 44, you learn how to go, oh, that's how you monetize it. Or yeah. how do you, you know, like. And then, and then James, you were going to ask him about the stand-up thing. I know you wanted to say. Yeah, something. you know, um, I've noticed that a lot of fighters, you know, they make that transition to being a comic. You know, guys like, you know, Brendan Schaub and, and Joe Rogan. Like, would you consider, like, dropping a comedy album, join the comedy game? What's up? Uh, yeah, no, I've, been, I've, been, I've actually been working on one of my books. Mm. It's uh, it's kind of like a, um, 
it's a it's a comedy book, just kind of like a Jeff Foxworthy. Oh shit! You know, like you might be a redneck, mm-hmm. but you might be a fucking fighter, or you know, it's <laughs> yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, so it's it's just you know, it's one of those comedy things where it's like you might be a you know, you might be a, F, a fucking fighter. No, you might be a hillbilly that stumbled out of Waffle no, House. No, you might be you might be a fucking fighter with four cars and no driver's license. Oh right, right, you know? right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, or you might be a you know a fucking fighter when you have. When you get tested for HIV, uh huh, seven times a year, right? Because you have to get tested for. You always get it tested. Yeah, that's one thing we we should probably do here on this podcast. (laughs) Damn it, rim shot. Okay, car crash. (laughs) Me me. (laughs) Wow, wow. So you're watching the UFC fighters now, girls? Are you watching the UFC? Are you watching sports? Are you watching UFC? You watching basketball? Not really. They're in the bubble now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a mm-hmm. bubble and there's people that are fighting but there's no audience. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, no, the, the... Not hearing the people? It, well, you know, the not hearing people, like, because I, I fight for fans, so it makes it, you know, makes it different, but it makes it easier when you're playing sports because you're like, my goal is to go here, but when you have fans, you start playing towards the fans. Like, it's like a... You're like a, in a rock concert, so you're like, oh, he wants to hear this riff, you know, so you play a little bit different, or, you know, like, but you're kind of like, how do you get the crowd, you know, the crowd more pumped up? Because you're not, so you're not hearing people scream for you as much. Cor- correct, right, or, yeah. or, and then it, it just changes the, the game, like, you push a little bit harder, you do a little bit more things, like, when you know. When there's people there. Yeah, because you're, they're, yeah. They're, they're like, yeah, let's go, you know, or. What are they, like, what? They say what? Yeah, Tell me how I'm screaming. Like, let's no, pretend, like, 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 let's like, do that ready to rumble shit. Do you have that song? Oh, yeah, Here, I just want to hear. I want to br- bring him out. Like, I want to see like what it feels like. And you guys all scream for him, and then we'll go into rant too. Ready? Yeah, Here we go. Ready. Yeah, here, go over there. Just go over there. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from, from Fresno. Are you from Fresno? I'm from Las Vegas. Las Vegas. <laughs> go, ready to rumble. Here he is, Big Roy let's Country. Go. For big country, Mr. Roy, big time mountain. Yeah. And on that note, it's time for rant number two. No. Here we go. All right, see what we did. Dum dum. Bato, you having fun? What are you doing, dude? Stop stealing my shit, bro. What the fuck? Stop stealing my shit, bro. Yeah, if you want something, just ask me for it. Fucking brother's trying to steal my shit, motherfucker. All right, cut the music, cut the music, cut the music. <sighs> so, as a stand-up comic, a lot of people... Want to be sucky? No, I'm good. All right. A lot of people ask me, how do I get into the business? You I've know? asked you that question. Huh? I said, I haven't even asked you that question. Yeah. How do I get, you know, how do I get, you know, doing stand up? So, for you, for you, oh, some marks. No. For you, do people ask you how to fight? Because they see you're a big, big UFC fighter, big star, big country, and they're probably. Or young little baby big countries that want to like emulate you. And little hillbillies coming up to you, hey man, I don't like you like that. And your belly falls on top of their little heads, right? While giving me a six pack. While giving me a six pack. Um, and they said, how do you get in a fight? Because physically you don't look like you know martial arts. You don't look like you know all these things, but you're fucking, you know what I mean? I, I do, yeah, Always no. Start. No, um, everybody, you know, always asks, you know, like, how do you do this? How do you do that? Um, when it comes at, to fighting, just because 
Uh, like, for example, like a lot of people, if they're hardcore fans, know that I have a black belt in jiu-jitsu. And jiu -jitsu, wow. And jiu-jitsu is one of those things where it's all about leverage and uh, technique where um, somebody like your size can beat me up. Really? Without, without coming out. Wow. Without coming out of the closet? Without coming out of the closet. Hopefully, there will be some UFC fighters that are in the closet after they watch this episode. Bok Choi, what are they going to do? You're going to want to learn how to fight? No. <laughs> I didn't say that. They're going to do what? Oh, uh, sorry. You weren't fucking paying attention, dude. Uh, I told you to listen. They're going to come out of the closet. Oh, yeah. Come out of the closet. And do what? And, um... To review their gender. And, and review their what? Their gender. Right. And their gender's what? Uh, it could be anything. What? It could be anything. Dude, like... you're fucking up the show. You gotta be more on top of it. We talked about this off camera. I'm gonna put you in the corner. Time out. Listen. I don't know how this show's going. I think he's gonna leave. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyways. So people want you to teach them how to fight. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the thing that everybody wants to know is from, uh, for me, is like uh, guys that are over 40. Like, how do you keep still doing it? Um, that's you ever do those over 40 penis commercials where they say, if you can't fuck and you're over 40, take this fucking pill? You know, there's that black guy with the fucking bald head that sells that fucking pill. I still haven't gotten it. I don't trust that shit. Um, I, I don't know what channel you're watching, though. <laughs> Bok Choy! Yeah! Who do you like? I like Big Country, no! dude. No! <laughs> Who do you like, Bok Choy? I like Big Country, dude. Fuck. <laughs> Anyways, bam, bam. So, go on. I don't know what we were just talking about, but we, we're, we're talking definitely about... losing subscribers. I know that shit. We're, but... we're not definitely losing subscribers. Okay, go on. Because, I mean, Bok Choy likes Roy, uh, Big Country, so. Yeah, so, so what do you do? What do you do with these, these kids that want to emulate you? What no, you the, I, I think the first thing is to find out if they're passionate about actually fighting. So mm -hmm. it's like uh, the first thing for, to find out if you're an actual fighter versus like a martial artist mm -hmm. is you just... Yeah, what's the, the difference between fighting and martial arts? Martial arts is more of a way of life. Um, mm. It's where you you're just you just take in knowledge and just try to make yourself a better person. Right. I think that's the, and you learn different techniques and you just it's kind of like going to school and just like picking up a book and mm. just take. But you're doing it's it on, like, a, yeah, it's on like, a physical side. Yeah, it's kind of like me with stand up. It's a way of life. And like with Kira, she's a DJ. It's kind of a way of life, right? Absolutely. Right, Talith. Dancing. Yeah, dancing is a way of life little for McNasty, me. Little McNasty, little McNasty, tell us. Little Miss Nasty. Yeah, McNasty. <laughs> so, Bok Choy, come over here for a second. Remember Bill last week, how we sat on the counter? Yeah. You, can you mimic him? Because I think that's going to save this episode. Watch your head. Yeah, right there. Make sure when you film him, you just get half his face. Oh, okay. I don't want you to see the whole face. It's too much. Okay. You see half of it? Yeah, what? It. Go to the left. Is that better? What's better, his whole face or half a face? I'd say whole face. Okay, get in, you, you win, okay. Is that good? <laughs> it's a nice three shot? Yes. So, you don't say anything, just listen, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, I think the girls definitely want to quit. I could feel it. They're like looking at their watches, they're like, fuck. You gotta make it at least episode three. Yeah, right? we gotta, <laughs> get it. So yeah, so the same thing with me, with people that want to do stand up, it's a way of life, you know? And then my mom in the comedy store, you know, if she liked you, she'd let you park cars. She'd let you answer phones. So is that the same thing if someone wants to be a fighter? You say, hey, go, 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 go carry my jock strap. Go get my bottle of water. Like, you, you want, tell us about this. Really, I, this I think, is your time I think, to I think, really I tell think, people. I think, like, uh, from a martial arts standpoint, it'd be like, because um, I come from uh, Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, uh, but it'd be like the Shaolin Temple. Like where if you wanted to learn martial arts, you would actually sit outside the doors of the Shaolin Temple wow. 
and you'd be like, can I, can I train? And then they would go, they'd let you just sit there. It almost kind of like, a, remember watching a Fight Club a long time uh-huh. ago where uh-huh. they would have to sit outside and then it's raining and they'd still sit outside until, until they go, you know what? Okay, he's been here long enough. Mm-hmm. You come on in. Yeah. And that's kind of like how martial arts, martial arts is basically like you said, it's just, it's just it's a way, way of life, life yeah, and, you just of kinda, life. and you just kind of go through the motions and as long as you're enjoying yourself, who cares? Right, right. And then when you do retire, you're still going to practice it. Yeah, I still, like, yeah. the one thing is I'll, I'll always be a fighter mm. regardless of, mm-hmm. like, because I kind of fell into fighting mm. because I, uh, another fighter pissed me off. And that's the reason why I fought, wow. started fighting. And then have you done security for anyone before? No. Really? No. Because I know, uh, uh, I met, I met, uh, 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 fuck, what's his, Mayweather's, Mayweather's uh, security guard out here. Uh, have you met him before? I met a few. There's a yeah, few. Yeah, he, he's out here, and uh, maybe you can be a, a, a security guard too on the side too. No. Yeah. I know no. if you are, or you can security guard for me and Buck Choi. Huh? Or Buck Choi can security or, guard for us. Yeah, or he can security <laughs> guard for us. Uh. So yeah. So what about someone like myself? You know, 52 years old. You know, I'm I'm pretty I'm in pretty good shape, but you know when it comes to like really learning, like if I got on the floor, I would scream and if someone had me in a, you know what I mean? I'd fucking, I would scream like a little bitch. See, it all depends, it, it, all, it, all, it all depends on, like see, but you, you're a comedian, so the best thing for you mm. would be, is, as this is a martial art, would be verbal combat. Verbal combat. Is like, the thing that got me out of so many fights mm. would be just simply like, how much money? Mm. You just ask mm. how much money. If they mm. don't have no money, then mm. usually that they're like, oh, they they think twice of why they're yeah like or just always carry a mouthpiece. A mouthpiece. A mouthpiece. With the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece. If you carry oh, just it, a mouth, a mouth, yeah. a mouthpiece. Yeah, if you just carry a mouthpiece in your in your and you go, and he, someone's trying to pick a fight, you just go like this, put it in, they'll and think they'll, twice. They'll yeah. be like, they'll be like, why does he have a mouthpiece? Yeah, because he's badass. <laughs> But, but so there's, cause I just want to, and this will be the last part of this, this, so there's, there's Taekwondo, there's Jiu Jitsu, there's wrestling. Do you do all that shit in one? Taekwondo is a Olympic sport where it's about point fighting. Oh. So I wouldn't really call that. I mean, it's a martial art, but it's not a, a true combat martial mm-hmm. art. And why do you think UFC is so popular? I think it's so popular because you're wearing bare knuckles. And you're like literally punching people in the fucking face with bare knuckles. And why is it that UFC fighters don't seem to have as much like damage than they do boxers? The like, di- what's the difference? The difference between because the boxers got the pit mittens, you'd think it wouldn't be that bad. And the UFC is like fucking hand up in your fucking what's up? Well, the difference between we'll just use the simple example is as soon as you get knocked out in boxing, yeah. they go, Can you stand up? Okay, we got 10 seconds. Let's do it again. Right. Where in MMA, if you get knocked out, there's no 10 seconds of like gun. They just go, huh? We call it a day. Wow. Versus like, how many times can we knock you out today? Wow. So that's kind of how it is, huh? That, that's yeah. pretty much, I think that's the biggest, that and if you're like, I don't like it in MMA, you can just simply tap. So it's the, it's the fact that you get knocked out and you get back up again and you hit them again and that's boxing. Yeah, and, and then MMA, they stop it. Yeah, and then but it's it, still bare knuckles. But in boxing, if you if you if you basically tap out and call, then they call you a pussy. Right. And who do you think the best UFC fighter is right now? <sighs> right now. Yeah. Because I've seen guys like literally like start right here like this, where they're like this, and they go ding ding ding, and they just run in and just start kicking and boom, and then he's down in three seconds. Like who's those fuckers? Do you know what I mean? Where they just fucking go off. There, I mean, it, it really, I mean, if, if usually if you, you fight and you get knocked out in the first five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, it's either you shouldn't belong there mm. or the other the guy, guy caught, caught you off guard. Or just guy just straight caught you. I mean, I like to see a, a longer fight, you know, and then, I mean, I like five round fights because it's about, all about the survival of the fittest and see who can uh, break who. Yeah, and also another thing is sometimes when you guys win, what do you do? You hop on the what? You hop on the cage. And yeah, you so ever... talk to them because I want to show them the, the, the action figure. Tell them about that. You hop on the cage. You hop on the cage and you rub your belly. That's what I do. I mean, it's the first time I did that was when I won the IFL 
Grand Prix Heavyweight Championship. And the reason why I did that was I was thinking, what can I do to get fans to um, just be engaged? And yeah. as soon as I did that, when I had, when I had women out in the, um, the audience rubbing their belly like this, mm-hmm. it was the best thing in the world. That's how I knew I, I hit home. Because, because, you're because guys, guys were already doing it, but as soon as I saw girls doing it, then I knew I had, uh, no. I had, I had my whole Kogan going. Yeah, but how much, how much, <laughs> how much do you weigh? Right now? No. Well, yeah, now and then. Uh, back Three then, something. back yeah. then it was like probably a two forty-five. Right so how the fuck do you get your fat ass on the cage? It's like, do you, do you have a step ladder? No, or you jump. What? You jump. That's fucking. That's so, so high jump for you to get your fucking big belly, fucking hillbilly ass on that fucking stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you, and then what about the whole Colin McGregor and then uh, 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 Mayweather fight? That was pretty interesting. That was dope. Um, that, that was dope, dude. It, that was a. It was like the circ. It was it was like old Pride days. It was like a circus for boxing. Mm-hmm. But they loved it. They, they loved did. It. Everybody, everybody loves a something different. Yes, yeah, something something different. And then it's also the. Um, you live. There were two different demographics just mm. colliding together. Right. And then, would you ever fight a boxer if they wanted you to get in the ring with, like, say, Mike Tyson or something like that? Or yeah, no. I. I, I mean, I've, I've already bo- boxed some world champions. Like Amazing. you know, I sparred with you know world uh-huh. heavyweight champions. So it's like, I know where I stand in you know the the whole game. Yeah. It, it just when you're older, it's just you know things start hurting a little bit easier. Yeah, and then also, uh, uh, you know, as a comic, you know, I've I've played some really I don't want to say shitty towns and shitty gigs, but I played some you know some some girls. You probably played some right. You always have to start somewhere. Yeah, you know, you 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 play some kind of like bars and stuff. Like people see you, they just say UFC. There's the big star. Tell us about some of the shittier gigs and the shittier. Did you ever like? Like uh, do do like a you know some some of this like in you know like in like Iraq or or like maybe Afghanistan or in some small little do you know no, what I mean? No, you know like I've fought in like some smaller uh, I wouldn't say smaller joints, but like I fought in Costa Rica, mm. I fought in Russia, um, but like the biggest hole uh, I wouldn't say hole in the walls, but the funnest ones I've had would be like fighting in Butte, Montana. Wow. Oh yeah, those are the tertiary markets. You so, know what the tertiary market is? No. Tertiary market is the, it's like, uh, it's like the suburb of the suburb. Gotcha. You know, it's like the towns that are so small that the Starbucks is in the Walmart. Right. They don't have a Starbucks. You know what I mean? They don't right. have a Panera Bread yet. Or even a Walmart. Or even a Walmart, yeah. So what's the most amount of money you've ever made doing a UFC fight? Oh, at your height? At my height? Yeah. Um, I still probably make... I make more money now than I did back then. So. Okay, well we can't reveal that because that then we got to get into you know some taxes. Other stuff. Bok Choi, you have anything <laughs> to say or? Uh, red number three. Red, it's time for red number three, dudes. Yes. You got to say it higher energy. It's time for red number three, dudes. Rub his belly, rub his belly. All right, here we go, guys. Last one over here, babe. Up on their waves like Bill did last week, remember? Beggars ball that tells me now. All right, cut the music, cut the music. All right. So, you're in a relationship, you're married. Tell us about that, what that's like, being in the entertainment business and work fighting. I mean, if I was your wife and I saw the sh- your shit get beat out of you all the time, I'd be fucking freaking out. Tell us what what tell us about that relationship and well it's dangerous, dude. Well, Come for, on. the first thing without that, being funny, just for real. No, no. First thing with inter- the entertainment uh, industry, if you can have a wife that that stays with you mm. for you know, because usually in the entertainment industry, there's two people that are trying in the entertainment industry, one trying to up the other, mm. and then that's usually why the relationships never work out. Mm. You know, or they're like. Uh, I got B and a C, you know, and then we're going to try to get together and make A or, you know, uh-huh. like a, so. Here, step over here a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So go on. So like, 
for for you for me it was uh, you know i found where did you guys meet and you know and all that stuff yeah uh, where i met my wife was at the club and we were bah, bah, bah. in montana or she was montana no in vegas okay i'm from vegas why would i go anywhere else to try to find me a lovely wife okay go on yes no i found i found i found my wife and we've been together for 16 years now? Wow. So in the entertainment industry, that's like dog years. So we've been together about 110. Wow. And tell me what that relationship is like right before a fight. Uh, you know what? Right before the fight, it's it's really simple. I mean, she gives me a kiss, uh, a kiss and then we go, I go out there and do my thing. Yeah. I mean, it's not... Uh, she, she When I win, she wins. When I lose, she, she actually, I think, takes it worse than I do. Because hmm. we've all seen the movie Rocky. Okay, the movie Rocky. And we've seen in the movie <coughs> Rocky get the shit beat out of him, right? Mm -hmm. By Apollo Creed or whoever. And then we cut to the wife and she's crying. You know what I mean? Because she's getting, he's, you know what I mean? So what about cutting to your girl? Does she ever have footage of her watching you get your shit beat out of you? No, usually she, she's usually the, I mean, good thing I'm a good fighter. So usually it hasn't been that bad. Mm. Um, usually she, Is there any the, tra the, the trailer comes out of her where she's like, kiss his ass, motherfucker. Right, like, you right, know, like, yeah. so the trailer comes out of her and she has more, I wish I could bottle her fury up and just put it in me. Uh huh. Wow. And then, um, and then after the fight, cause you, you have some, you have some, uh, a, a little bit of black and blue. What's the worst that's ever happened to you? Which fighter is the worst that ever, like, oh, shit, I got to really fucking, it's going to take some time to get over this because this doesn't look that bad. No, that's, that's why, like, uh, I think the worst was I got the only cut that I've actually had in a fight. Mm. It was right here, and I think I got, like, eight stitches. Because uh, I don't see the stitches now. That's because it's been years. Yeah. But, no, it was, like, right, it was right, right here, and I had a little scar from it. Yeah. Um, but that was probably the worst, as in like a flesh wound. Yeah. And then, but I've had like, I've blown out my knees. Yeah. I've had stuff internally. Yeah. Oh, inside. Like, like you know, m like losing meniscus and torn your a ACL and wow. stuff like that. But, yeah. but like on the outside, the only thing was a, a cut. Things. So what's it like to just get this shit beat out of you? Um, I like to say I don't give them a shit to beat out of me, but... You have it, gotten the shit beat out of you a couple times. Yeah, you know what? Like in your face, just pounding it. I boom, think I, boom, boom. You guys, stop, stop, stop. It hurts. You ever say that shit? No. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you never? No, because if, you, if you're going that route, then you just come out. Then you come out of the closet. And then you come you know, out of the closet. You sure you don't want to tickle my tape, bro? <laughs> No, because it'd be illegal. It'd be no, illegal. No fingers in the no orifices. No fingers in the orifices. Jesus yeah. Christ. And, um, <sighs> wow, so, and then when you first started seeing women, women fighters, I know I'm friends with Jessica Evil I, she was here. We got Ashley's coming. That's fucking gnarly. And girls, you should chime in on this. This is a real business. I don't think I could do it. Those bitches are tough. They kick the shit out of me. Right. Yeah. Same. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I think there's always a better way to make a better living. No, but what Especially do you think about girls one. fighting, you know, right? Depends on what you look like. Mm, right. So if you're really, really hot, then what? I'd find a different business. Different business. Because you can make a lot and more if you're, money. And if you're crusty and like kind of look like a dude. Then fucking just deal with it and let's go. Fucking let's go. All right. All like right. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you I'm, guys don't have babies? Uh, we have one. How old? Seven. Boy or girl? Boy. And what's his name? Jackson. Jackson. With an X. With an X. Is Gotta he a little different. baby? Is he like a baby country? Um, baby word. Actually, he, he today he said. Does he, he look like you? He I body looks like me, and face looks like my wife. That's hilarious. That's great. So so Jack, is he going to be a fighter? I hope not. You hope not. I hope not. No. Please no. No. A comic? Uh, I'll let him be a comic. A comic, all he, right. Because he, he is funny. He's a funny kid. Because his favorite line is, baby, 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 baby. What's Baby, funny? baby, baby. Why does he say that? He talks to my wife. He's like, baby, baby, baby. Oh, that's come, hilarious. Calm, calm down. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. She's getting mad. Baby, baby, baby. Oh, that's funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it's the funniest thing, but 
when he turns Since 16, I, I, I'm just curious when he's going to stop. Right. When he's going to actually realize it's... And what grade is he in? Second. Second grade. So has he started liking girls yet? No. No. I hope not. Uh, too early. Too early. Too early. And on that note, we're going to kind of soiree into here. Music. music. Let's go after you. Age before beauty. Here we go. Huh? So asking, that's what we're next going to see on the big screen then. I, I hope, I hope, Let guess, me see guess house this, two. Guest house two. Let me see you do some Shakespeare to the camera. Throughout foul, for the, when you want to, da, 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 but da, 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 no, some Shakespeare. No. No. <laughs> I'm a strong silent type. Well, this is. I'm, a, I'm more of a stunt man. No, you're gonna be an actor. No, 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 I know, I know, no, no, but I'm the stuntman that does his own stunts. That has uh, a couple lines that, you know, because, like, I've learned, like, some different guys where there could be the cue card right there, Mm. and he just does his, like, six lines, and then they go cut, and then we over here, and we do it again. Yeah. And then we got, you know, and they got, like, four different cameras so they can get the four different angles, especially because, I mean, I could act now a little bit better than say back in the 80s where you were actually on film mm. where they'd be like oh, I'm sorry buddy it's a one taker we right. can't we use yeah you can't do it over right well I think if you are going to start acting we need to do a little Vincent Van Gogh to that left ear we need to chop that fucker off we have to chop that fucker off no no you just no, you just shoot it you just shoot me this way no because this way. the problem is is you're going to be in in character and you're going to be engaged in what's going on but then you're going to like what the f- that's ears fucked up and you know what I mean? Unless you're playing a UFC, ex-UFC fighter. No, it's, it's just like all the guys now with tats. The tattoos. Huh? Yes. Can you give advice to some people out there, some younger people, some young fighters, some people in the business? You actually, some people that are hurting right now with what's going on. Here we go. Well, the first thing, all you got to do is find what you love. That's the... Find something you love and then go after it. That's the number one thing. Uh, Second thing is be consistent. Don't as soon as you hit that first wall, you, it's gonna open up another door. Just kind of as long as you keep on moving forward and not backwards, you're always going. Even though it's like a half circle, but you gotta keep going forward. A no is a what, thing. Bok Choy? No is always a yes. Tell him. Yeah. Tell, tell him, Big Boy. Tell him in Vietnamese. Say. Um, you know, call. Um, no, I haven't called yet. No. You would have loved it. Yeah. Yeah. So what he was saying, so what he was saying is a no is a yes. So you just said at the back door thing, right? Girls? Yeah. Any inspiration to the young girls out there? Um, I agree with Big Country. Do what you love and follow that path. That's it. Yeah, what you love, right? That's all you can do. Passion is what always will get you through. Do what you're passionate about. And breast about. milk too. Some breast milk along the way. I heard it tastes good, but I never tasted it. Whoa, rim shot. All right, guys. So let's give our social media here out. At Cholesterol Poppy on all sites. Follow me on Instagram under God Mike Chan. DJ Kira, all platforms. Follow me on Instagram at Lethal TNT. Country Boy. Real easy. Roy Nelson MMA on every platform. And I'm Polly Shore. Thank you guys for being part of this. This was our our second episode here in Las Vegas. This is my new crew. Thank you for not leaving and bailing. Um, I'll see you guys next week. And uh, check out the guest house. It comes out September 4th. I'll see you. Bye. Thank you.